like to welcome you to bemorenews.com. Okay, you got a story from me, Mr. Baker. No, I was just gonna tell the story about when in the, in the early 80s, the mid 80s, when my wife and I first got married and got an apartment in DC. It was during the crack epidemic. And so one of the beautiful things about the place that we had, that we got, is there was a parking space in our backyard. And so the first day we went there to go in our parking space and people were shooting up. <sighs> And so my wife went there and I told her, I said, honey, we just gotta not use that. She went back there and she told the folks, she was like, listen, I'm not calling the cops on you, but I've got a brand new baby. And she said this to all of us, I want you to spread the word. If anybody breaks into my house, I'm gonna assume it's you. If anything happens to my child, I'm gonna assume it's you and I will be back. Other than that, we ain't got no problem. When I bring in groceries in the back, I will, if you help me put them in, I will pay you, but if anything's missing, I'm coming after you. What it said to I me like was, her. what? What? You know what? She wasn't afraid. Can't be afraid. Can't be afraid. These are, these are our people. These are our people. And her thing was like, you know, to me, somebody who wanted to go into public service, it's like, you start now cleaning up this neighborhood. We ain't moving from the neighborhood. We're going to help them. I'm going to do everything I can to help you, but just know that there's another side to it. There's gonna be respect. I'm gonna respect you, you respect us. And that, that's a two-way street, and that was one of the best lessons I could have ever learned. Now, of course, I stayed in the car while she was doing that, <laughs> with the baby. But, but no, it, it's, it, it's, it's the same thing. I think we know that, you know, you've gotta come here, and, and it's our, if you wanna, if you wanna be in public service, if you wanna take the reins, then you can't ignore every part of this state or every part of this city and I think that's Mal that Malcolm X said you can't serve the people if you don't love the people that's right so we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule I'm sure there are other parts of the world that uh, might be more attractive in some regards I will tell you that everybody eventually comes through Pennsylvania Avenue June 11th we have a huge parade it's our annual uh, Pennsylvania Avenue Parade, June 11th uh, at 11 a.m. We, we welcome you to be a part of it. But any thoughts on police? You got police, you got crime, you have drugs, you have the consent decree. What do you think? Well, you know, one of the gentlemen that we talked to earlier said it best. I think it starts with respect. But you know what? The leaders have to own this and be respectful and see our people, as you were just saying. I think it starts there. And it starts by understanding that we have to be strategic and that we have to prioritize all of these investments in mental health, emotional support, and access to jobs and making sure the police is here actually to protect, not to just symbolically you know, come around. But it's overall for me has been, what struck me is the sense of abandonment and almost despair that for some reason has just become a matter of life and, and and just routine. And so thank you for this opportunity because as you said earlier, what Malcolm X said is absolutely right. You can't help the people unless you love the people. And it is that love that I think has really compelled us to run for this particular office uh, because we've seen it, we have done it, and we understand it. Um, and so this is not lip service or just one you know visit once in a while. It's a real commitment. So thank you. Thank Count, you. Councilwoman, thank you. I wanted you to know that people don't come here. Elected officials don't come here. And, and that's why, how you doing? All right. How you? It was very important to me when, when asked where to meet you. It was important to me that you see historic West Baltimore, that you see Pennsylvania Avenue. Do we see elected officials around here? Do they come through here? But, but everybody wants the credibility that they've been on the avenue, but we don't see them. I was telling Mr. Navarro about this subway station, right? Up this subway station. Of all of the subways, it's the dirtiest. Compared to Hopkins, and you talked about Hopkins and the, 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 the tale of two cities. It goes back to, I wanted to share with you, J. Barry Mahool. He was mayor around 1907. And he's known as the father of segregation. And what a lot of our elected officials don't know is that Baltimore's history of segregation became a national model. Segregation was replicated. The housing policies established here were then replicated around the country. 
So you're right. There are parts of Baltimore that you would never imagine that that people here have never even seen, like like East you know East Harbor, look a totally different city. So we need equity, and and the thing is, the Democrats are the big tent. Right. Black people make up a thirty percent, and we have a burgeoning Latino. I gotta ask you, Mr. Navarro, about um, MS13. Now we have a high school out east of here, uh, Patterson High School. Any suggestions, tips on how to handle a growing Latino population uh, here in the city of Baltimore, especially when we don't have, uh, we don't have any, uh, I would say, Latino elected officials. Not a lot. I mean, one and two. But out there, help me out. How, how do we reach that population? And I mentioned to you in the realm of domestic violence that, Latino women are often left alone, ostracized. It's such a challenge, um, but I can specifically point to one program in Montgomery County because this has been an issue that Montgomery County has dealt with for a long time. People don't realize this. Uh, Just like you say, people don't understand certain parts of Baltimore. It seems like in Montgomery County, there's the sense that everybody there is just wealthy and it is a homogeneous population. It's not not the case. But there's a program called Street Outreach Network. And really, are people who are trained to work with especially the youth, but they're deployed into the streets, and they establish that trust. It is really an amazing model, and I and I would you know I would offer that as an as an option for us, especially when we get to the governor and lieutenant governor uh, 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 seats, is is to be able to scale those types of programs because they make a huge difference. They're able to be in the streets, connecting with the youth, connecting with the families, and intervening before something happens. This is a very serious issue. And the issue of MS-13, as you know, is an international uh, issue. And so we can't take that lightly, uh, but we do have to do it from the prevention part, from the intervention part, and make sure that the police is there to actually support the communities. This is why when defund the police came so popular, communities in Montgomery County and other places that have been victims of MS-13, for example, kept saying, no, please don't do that because we actually need more support and more protection. Okay, I got one last question for you. I've been to a Latino rally in D.C. It started in Montgomery County. And I did not know that the Latinos could do a million-man march. But, lady, out of nowhere, I saw tens of thousands. And I understand that you can tap into that demographic and that's going to swing you over the top for governor por supuesto <laughs> absolutely uh you know this is a growing community it is a community that is poised uh to vote it is poised to help us with our public campaign finance because we only take money from individuals and it's poised to volunteer and and they know me because they know that i have been there every single step of the way to empower not just the Latino community, but really communities of color. And I'm proud of that track record. Así que la comunidad latina, aquí estamos diciendo presente. Uh, y juntos vamos a llegar a elegir a Russian Baker y a Nancy Navarro para gobernador y vicegobernadora. Good deal. Gracias. And thank you for coming to uh, Historic West Baltimore. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth.